This video will demonstrate how to upgrade your Sierra Summit to the latest release of software, Sierra 4.0. Please follow the upgrade instructions carefully as this video is only a supplement to those step-by-step -step instructions. The upgrade instructions can be found in the Install Media, in the Documents folder, and the Sierra Software Upgrade Instructions folder. Here you'll find a list of release notes. The most recent release notes are here, version 4.0. This will give you a list of all the new features added in this release. To upgrade, first open the upgrade instructions and carefully follow these instructions step by step. Before beginning the upgrade process, it's a good idea to take a backup of all of your settings. To do this, go to File, Preserve, and then save this file in a location where you can find it later if needed. Then open the install media and we'll begin the installation process. Close the Sierra Summit software. In the bottom tray, you can see if you're using a Catlink server or not. If you click on the Catlink icon, you'll see the current version of Catlink that you're running, and here you'd also see that you're connected to a server. In this case, I'm not connected to a server, so I can go ahead and upgrade the software. Upgrading the software will upgrade my client to Catlink 5.3. If you are using a Catlink server, you want to make sure that the Catlink server is upgraded to version 5.3 prior to upgrading your Sierra Summit clients. In the Install Media folder, double-click on the Sierra Setup.exe icon. This will bring up the installer. If this is a reader station, you're going to install the Summit Reader. If this is an acquisition station, you're going to install the Sierra Summit. Here you're going to just hit OK. This is closing the current Catalink programs that are open in the bottom tray. We're upgrading the Catalink client to the latest version 5.3. Once that's finished, hit Next. It should install into the C drive. and then click Finish. Go ahead and click Next to update the drivers. And then the install, it, the help files will automatically be updated. Once the help files are updated, the Sierra installer will show up again. The next step is to install Quick Report. If you're using version 3.0 or earlier, you may need to uninstall Quick Report. If you're upgrading from 3.1, just go ahead and click Install Quick Report. This will update your Quick Report to the latest version. Click Finish. There's no need to upgrade CAD Capture in this version, so you can skip to the Launch Firmware Update Utility. Depending on what version you're upgrading from, there may be several um, firmware items that need to be updated. Simply look at the current firmware and compare to the supported firmware. If these numbers don't match, then select the item that doesn't match and select Update. Do this for each item in the list until both columns match, then close, this off, close the firmware updater. At this point, you can turn off the base unit and turn it back on. And now you should be finished with the upgrade. You can now launch the Sierra Summit software. You'll notice the icon has been updated to the new Sierra 4.0 icon. You should see version 4.0.482 here. Log in with your typical login password. And at this point, you should be able to go ahead and start examinations. However, there are a couple things that you may want to do prior to proceeding with examinations. First off, one of the new features in Sierra 4.0 is the ability to use docked and hidden and tabbed windows. To make full use of the new software, we recommend using our default layout, and then you can make edits from there. To do this, go to View, select Windows Layout, go to New Studies, and check Use Docked Layout. 
then go back to view and go to view layout and then you can decide for older studies that were recorded in a previous version of software if you want to use the new docked layout or the old default layout. I would I recommend using the new docked layout. This will set up all your views to our new docked defaults. You can obviously make edits from there. You may want to go ahead and make some screenshots of your older layouts before doing that step in case you want to replicate the views that you had before. The second thing you may want to do is under view you can go to color themes and choose a different color theme. We now support three basic color themes. Standard is the closest to what you had in previous versions. Dark gives you a black on gray and white background. And then light gives you a white on white background. And you can choose one of your preference. You can always, you can always switch those in the future as well. If you don't like the new docked layouts, you can always go to File, Restore All, and load your settings that you saved before doing the upgrade. This would default all your settings back to the old style of views with just floating windows. Just as a reminder, if you're using a Catlink Control Preserve file, you won't be able to make any settings changes or restore any settings unless you have the rights to update the preserve file. You'll know if you're using a Catlink preserve file by looking down into the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And if next to a preserve file there's a name here, then this is a Catlink preserve file and it's saved within the Catlink database. So any changes that you make, whether you're restoring settings or changing settings, after making those changes, you'll want to go to File, Update Catlink preserve file. If this is grayed out, that means that the user you're logged in as does not have rights to update the Catalink Preserve file, so you'll want to log in as a user that has those rights before making any settings changes. This concludes the software update tutorial. There are many other tutorials and instructional videos available by going to the Support button and then selecting Instructional Videos. If you are a customer based in the United States, you will also have access to live chat during regular business hours. Just click on the Live Chat button and this connects you directly to the support team where you can select the software that you're using, put in your name, email address, and type in a question, and the support staff will get right back to you during regular business hours.